Facebook besties. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Delaney if you are new here and we are back today with, I hate to admit it, another book haul. I have a problem. I wake up in the morning and I try to do my work and I log onto my computer and I end up on Target, on Pango Books, on Book Outlet, on Amazon. Like, I cannot be stopped. And the second I get all the books that I'm like, okay, I just need these ones. Like, I just need this one book that everyone's rating six stars right now. I log on and Sarah Caroli or Des or Rachel Catherine, someone is reading something and they're like, this is my favorite book of the year. It's my six star read. And I'm like, well, now I have to order that too. I just placed an order yesterday, for books from the UK, because I needed the paperback copies, of course, with the pretty covers. Like, I have a problem, but I'm aware of the problem. Anyways. This book haul is another one that I shopped mainly secondhand in budget books, so did not cost me an arm and a leg, so I actually did really well with that. But I did end up with quite a few books to add to my shelves, which there's not much room left on my shelves, so that's a problem. But I am super excited to share these books with you today, so we're going to go through one by one and talk a little bit about them, why I picked them up, where I got them from, all the things. So buckle up and maybe open up Amazon because if you're anything like me, you're easily influenced into buying books and I have some good ones here. So we're gonna start with the only one that I've actually already started reading and that is The Seven Year Slip. So this is, I put this on my October TBR. I've talked about this before, wanting to read this. I feel like everyone has been reading this book lately and giving it like five or six stars and I'm not having that five star feeling yet, but I have a feeling I could get there. So this takes place in New York and this is basically about Clementine who inherits her late aunt's apartment. In her whole childhood her aunt told her that her apartment was magical and Clementine was like oh yeah that's fun like childhood it's fun like the magical story that my aunt's telling me whatever. But she steps into this apartment after she inherits it when her aunt passes away and she is transported seven years into the past. And there's a man living there. Her aunt always said that her apartment was a pinch in time where timelines were kind of converged and people were living in the past and the future and the present. And it seems to be true because we have a man from seven years in the past and Clementine in the future and they are coexisting in this apartment together. But the second she leaves her apartment, she is in the present day. So there's, there's a problem there. I'm loving the characters. I'm loving the storyline. I'm loving the fantastical, whimsical vibe. I'm really thoroughly enjoying this book. I have yet to get the five star feelings, like I said, but I'm only probably about a third of the way through, so we'll see. Then from a little free library, I picked up A Burning, and I don't know what this is about, but it looked really intriguing to me. I'm gonna read you the back because that's what got me. It says, an electrifying debut novel about three unforgettable characters whose lives become intertwined in the wake of a shattering tragedy. A tale of innocence, guilt, betrayal, and love. Like. I'm in. I don't know. I don't need to know anything else. Innocence, guilt, betrayal, and love. Powerful words there. I'm invested. I gotta know. My sister and I actually went on a little free library date and drove around and did all our book swaps and picked up some new books from the little free libraries in our town. And that's where I also got Because of Her. And this is another one that I haven't heard anything about this. I know nothing about it. But look at this cover. Like that just screams like I have to know what's going on. Why is she running? Where is she running from? Why does she look like... Alison De Laurentiis from Pretty Little Liars, what's going on? This is about a woman and a man and basically the man has a suspicious crazy sister. The last line of this summary is what got me. It says, when Emily and Victoria's lives collide it brings out their deepest secrets and proves that trying to hold on to things you love most can be the most deadly. Why? Why is it deadly? I gotta know. I also love how big this book is. Like, it's pretty big. I don't know. I judged a book by its cover and that's why I picked it up. So, cover well done. Jumping into my order from Pango Books, I actually placed this entire order looking for one book and I'm so disappointed in myself and I'll tell you why. So I wanted Six of Crows because I've heard really great things about Six of Crows. I went around to like half price books. I went to my local secondhand shop. Like I was looking for this book just to pick it up for cheap and whatever. I was excited to read this series because I've heard really good things. I finally commit. I place a whole Pango book order mainly to get this book because I was like, I found it and I also found some other books. I got good deals on them. Like I'm gonna place this order. I heard that I have to read a whole series before I read this book. The Shadow and Bone trilogy, I think? Maybe? I don't know. I heard that I have to read like a whole series before I read Six of Crows before 
it will even make sense. Is that true? I need someone to tell me if that's true. Because I was so excited, but I am not excited to the point of that level of commitment. I would didn't sign up to read a whole nother series. So someone tell me if that is factual information, if that's true that I have to read other series before I pick up Six of Crows. Anyways, in that same Pingo book order, I picked up All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niv Niven, Nivian, however you say her last name. This just got turned into a Netflix movie and I want to watch the movie and I've also heard really great things about this book. It's about Theodore Finch who is fascinated by death and like is obsessed with thinking about ways he could die. Violet who basically lives for the future. She's super invested in like her dreams and her goals and they meet at the top of their school bell tower and kind of save each other's lives. I think this is YA. I think it's deeper. I think it's more emotional. I'm getting like thousand boy kisses if he had been with me type of vibes. I'm hopeful. My, I really have high hopes for this book. I've heard a lot of good things. And then by the same author I got Holding Up the Universe and I really don't know anything about this one. But summary short, I'm just going to read it to you. It says Libby is the girl who's Libby is the girl whose name everyone knows but no one really sees her except Jack. Jack is the guy who's friends with everybody but he doesn't let anyone in except Libby. Cute. The two make an unlikely the two make an unlikely pair and yet they just might be able to change each other's worlds. Sounds sweet, sounds cute, also sounds YA. And yeah, I think this was like two bucks on Pango Books. Whoever was selling it was giving like the best deals. So I had to get it. Then I finally picked up You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel. I've heard about this book so many times. This is like a closed door, no spice, kind of innocent romance, I believe. And I think it's about fiancés who their relationship's kind of falling apart and neither of them wants to end it. So I think it's like both of them trying to push the other one to their wit's end so they don't have to be the one to end. I believe. I think they like both want out but don't want to be the one to leave. You know what I mean? But I also think it's like second chance. So I think in this process they maybe fall back in love with each other, question mark. I really don't know. All I know is that I've seen really great reviews on this from like all the book girlies and it's just seems like a lighthearted, fun, kind of a filler standalone romance. So I wanted to pick this up and see what all the hype's about, even though I'm late to the party as per usual. Then I know Sarah Caroli just read this one. So I wanted to pick it up as well because anything Sarah does, I'm like, okay, me too. I'll do it too. She could literally jump off a building and I would be like, me too, sis. But I picked up The Problem With Forever and I think this is another YA. I believe she's a senior in high school and I really don't know much about this either, but also this cover is really pretty. I honestly just got this because I saw Sarah read it in her reading vlog and I think she gave it like four stars or something. She rated it fairly high, I felt. And yeah, I'm excited. Also look at the flop factor of this book. It's like pre-flopped. You cannot beat that. Then my last book from Pango Books is One Day in December by Josie Silver. And I just think this is another cheesy Christmas romance book. This is a Reese's Book Club pick, so it has to be good, obviously. I eat up all the cheesy Hallmark vibes in Christmas books. Like I have so many on my TBR and I just want the whole month of December to be like these cheesy filler Christmas romances. I say that now and then I'll read like two of them and be so sick of them. But as of now, I am so here for the vibes and I cannot wait. This is another one that I'm gonna add to my TBR. This next book I actually got at Goodwill for two dollars and that is Wrong Place Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. This is a thriller that's been super popular and I'm pretty sure this is about a woman who knows her son has killed somebody and she can like go back in time or something. Yeah so she witnesses her son commit a murder I'm pretty sure and then she keeps waking up one day in the past so like she wakes up and it's yesterday and then it's the day before and the day before and she feels like she has an opportunity to like change his decision and like prevent this from happening. I don't know, this mother-son dynamic I feel like could be so interesting in a thriller when she knows that her son is guilty but like she's the mom and wants to protect him. I don't know. Sounds creepy. I think my sister read this and said it was really really good so I've heard lots of good things about this one and for two dollars like it wasn't in the best condition. It's like a little bit bent and creased and beat up but two bucks? Sure. Two more books and they're actually both hardcovers which is unfortunate but I picked up Razorblade Tears and this is another one that I got from a little free library and I don't know anything about. It's about Ike Randolph and it says I'll just read like the first little blurb of the summary and it says a black father, a white father, two dead sons, a quest for revenge and redemption. What? Like I just think that sounds so so good. I'm super intrigued with this one and I cannot wait to read this. How oh, cute! There's a bookmark from an Oregon bookshop. Lucy's Books. If you're ever in Oregon, 
check out Lucy's books. Shameless plug for Lucy. I don't know who Lucy is, but go. And last but not least, this is one that I actually splurged on and just ordered new off of Amazon. No discount, no secondhand, but I got Divine Rivals. I picked it up. I did it, and I am so excited for this book. I have seen all the book girlies give this like five or six stars, and I cannot wait to read this. I am really not a fantasy reader at all. I struggle with fantasy. I'm still so new. Shatter Me is like really the only fantasy series I've dipped my toe into as an adult and so still very new. I got intimidated by Fourth Wing. Like I'm st I'm learning. I'm learning how to be a fantasy girly so I'm hoping this isn't too high fantasy but I have heard really amazing things about the romance subplot in this fantasy book so I'm hopeful that the romance will be strong enough that I can get invested and I won't be too lost or too confused. I'm like gonna add it to my top of my TBR cart and hopefully get to it within the next couple weeks or so. Fingers crossed. Let's do a super quick little rapid fire recap here. So the books in this haul were, because of her, A Burning, The Seven Year Slip, Six of Crows, Holding Up the Universe, All the Bright Places, The Problem with Forever, You Deserve Each Other, One Day in December, Wrong Place, Wrong Time, Razor Blade Tears, The Beautiful Divine Rivals. I'm sweating. All right, another day, another book haul. That's all I got for you today. I do have more books on the way from the UK and also another book from Pango Books. I know. Book buying van, potentially in the future. Not likely. Question of the video, leave a comment down below telling me the latest book that you picked up for yourself. That's all I have for you today, so don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future bookish videos, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye, book besties. I'm off to Costco, and I definitely want a churro. Mm -hmm.